Hello everyone and welcome in another VHDL FPGA tutorial series. <clears throat> this series is meant for a beginners and I am trying to uh, create such examples which actually help students to build something uh, real world and uh, interactive and practical so that you can test uh, code in your ac actual FPGA board rather than uh, sitting on your computer and just simulating and uh, I don't having confidence either this code will work in real hardware or not so this series is specially designed for students to help them uh, to build confidence in their real world VHDL or FPJ programming so in today's tutorial we are going to multiplex seven segment uh, display in last lecture we left with just single digit um, uh, seven segment decoding if you haven't seen that the previous two tutorials of clock dividing and uh, the second tutorial about the FPGA seven segment display uh, please go back and check out these uh, two lectures because that uh, two lectures is going to help you a lot in today's uh, VHDL tutorial series uh, you can also follow uh, follow along and watch them later as if you have still left some confusion if you don't this is the demo for previous uh, tutorial that we just uh, used and uh, uh, in previous tutorial we uh, created an up or incremented counter for seven segment display which count from 0 to 9 and then reset again to 0 so we created uh, this uh, single digit counter in last tutorial in today's tutorial we are going to build uh, four use of four, uh, all four digits because these uh, digits are multiplexed and uh, share uh, the cathode terminals together and uh, we need to create some kind of multiplexer so we are going to create a time division multiplexer in today's tutorial as you can see from the reference manual that uh, we have uh, uh, four uh, nodes uh, that are connected uh, to individual seven segment display and the cathodes all uh, cathodes of the all digits are uh, commonly connected to the uh, these pins of the uh, Zilinx FPJ Spartan 6 FPJ. So what we gonna do we need to create some kind of multiplexer that will uh, uh, turn a uh, single digit one by one. It will turn first digit then it will off the first digit and turn on second digit A and 1 and after that it is gonna switch off A and 1 and switch on A and 2 and after that it is gonna switch off A and 2 and again gonna switch on a and 3 and uh, once all uh, the digits are uh, served it will shift to a and 0 again well in bottom uh, it explains the method of uh, multiplexing the digit it says that in order for each of the four digits to appear bright and continuously illuminated all four digits should be driven once every 1 to 16 millisecond it means that uh, I, you can select the multiplexing range of time division multiplexing range between 1 millisecond to 16 millisecond if you are going to make a, a delay of less than 1 millisecond it, it will not illuminate properly and if you are going to uh, create delay above than 16 millisecond it will flicker your display so the uh, appropriate range of time is between 1 to 16 millisecond it means that for a refresh frequency of 1 kilohertz to 60 hertz so you can uh, refresh uh, the uh, digit between 1 kilohertz to 60 hertz you can use uh, the frequency of your choice between these range for example in a 60 hertz refresh scheme the entire display would be refreshed once every 16 millisecond so every millisecond a display will be refreshed and each digit would be illuminated for half of the refresh cycle so uh, uh, it means that 4 millisecond as uh, a complete cycle contains 16 millisecond and uh, if we have four digits to serve and so we have a four millisecond to serve each digit 
the controller must drive the cathode with the correct pattern when the corresponding anode signal is driven so this is another important point to be remembered that the cathode uh, the controller should be uh, provide proper pattern for the respective uh, cathodes of the respective digit it means that if you are illuminating or uh, turning on the second digit uh, anode then you must provide what value should be appear on the second digit so each time if you when you are going to refresh the digit you are also going to refresh not only the anodes but the cathodes as well so to illustrate the process if the n0 is asserted while the cb and cc are asserted then a one will be displayed in the digit one position so if you are go, uh, turning or uh, making the an0 uh, enable and then you are going to put cb a uh, uh, cathode of b and c uh, as uh, on then uh, the one will be displayed on digit one then a, if a and one is asserted while c and c b and c c asserted then seven will be displayed in the digit of position two so uh, to display if uh, when you refresh it combinedly it will display 17 on the uh, uh, seven segment display so uh, you will keep the process for all four digits and uh, you can uh, display any uh, number of your choice on the display just uh, as in example we did for four three two one to display uh, on so enough talking let's open up your uh, xilinx uh, uh, to create a project for uh, today's tutorial or to multiplex seven segment uh, this was the code from the last tutorial where we created a counter from uh, 0 to 9 like this and uh, created a decoder to uh, decode the digit uh, from uh, binary 0 to 9 uh, to the respective cathode uh, uh, font value that should be uh, displayed on the cathode to display a proper digit so this was the truth table for the uh, cathode values uh, according to the number from 0 to 9 and here we have the clock divider to create uh, um, 500 millisecond refresh for counting from 0 to 9 now we now we are going to extend this code and first of all we are just getting rid of from uh, this 500 millisecond delay so we are not going to use uh, this delay anymore so what you need to do is uh, just uh, uh, not incre no increment in the counter and no if statement required so no 500 millisecond delay is here so what we uh, need first of all we need to make sure what refresh rate we are using here so for the refresh rate because we can choose between a 1 millisecond to um, a 16 millisecond delay so let's create a 1 millisecond delay 1 millisecond delay means that uh, for 100 megahertz clock uh, uh, let's say uh, this was the 500 millisecond delay and to create a 1 millisecond delay we need to get rid of two zeros for 500 and 1 so that was all for um, creating 1 millisecond delay now we have uh, over a clock of uh, uh, 100 megahertz uh, divided to 1 millisecond uh, so whenever uh, the 1 millisecond is completed the clock will be refreshed and uh, uh, so the clock will be reset now we have the clock uh, what we again uh, do is we need to change this anode so we need a process to uh, uh, just uh, get uh, refresh these anodes accordingly For that we need to keep track of which uh, digit we are referring for now. Let's create a new uh, digit uh, and uh, let's create an AN number which will denote that uh, currently we are serving to which an odd number. So it will range from natural range 0 to 4 because we have just 4 digits and uh, currently we are not serving anything. So uh, we just have a 0 here. Uh, so we can also say that 0 to 3 uh, because we have a 4 number now we need to create a process uh, which will serve the uh, anodes and we will create a process we will uh, which take anode and number and whatever anode is uh, currently in process it will uh, enable that anode and uh, remain 
all other inodes switch off so let's begin the process and create a case on that anode number and uh, when that anode number is uh, zero and uh, when it is zero all we need to do is uh, to take this value and uh, put it in uh, here like this and uh, so all we need to do is to repeat this process for all over four digits like this so here we need to change one, uh, one two and three and here we need to switch this zero from uh, here to uh, right next to here so uh, for the third digit and uh, for the second digit right so the clock will be shifted from uh, the anode will be refreshed whenever this anode number is changed so uh, next we what we are going to do is to we need to end this case as well so let's end this case like this so we have now anode refreshed but uh, we uh, don't need to refresh the inodes but we also need to change the counter value according to this anode number so what we need to do is uh, we need to uh, put our some uh, specific value to that digit as well so a counter value is going to change as well so we can do this uh, two ways we can uh, 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 combine this uh, statement or we can create another process like i'm creating another process on the an numbers and uh, i am beginning at end process and uh, here i am creating a new case on an number which is uh, end case here and here what i'm going to do is when it is zero uh, all it need to do is to put a value in a counter which is going to be 1 and similarly we need to put values from all 4 and uh, let's say 2, 3, 4 and here we have 3, 2, 1 so now let's try to synthesize and see if we have any syntax error on in our code or not and uh, after that the last step that we left is just to refresh the clock uh, at uh, here uh, so we need to change the anode number whenever one millisecond is created okay we have some warning uh, so uh, what warning do we have it says that in line 41 using initial value 0 for uh, let's see what where it is okay so uh, using initial value of 0 for an, a number since it is never assigned so uh, we uh, never assigned an odd number any value but it is using okay let's uh, um, ignore this uh, warning for now and move focus on the an odd number here let's a n number is uh, incremented uh, a n number plus one and uh, if a n number is uh, greater than uh, three then uh, just uh, reset a n number to zero again okay so we reset it there and and f okay so uh, here we just ended it let's resynthesize and see what happens now so now it is uh, has a warning it says that the ff latch will be trimmed du uh, during the optimization process it it is because that the clock counter from uh, 17 to uh, upward it is having a constant value of 0 Le because we are uh, uh, changing the clock counter from uh, a value of uh, 500 millisecond to just 1 millisecond all we need to do is to change this value 
and uh, just to be make sure that uh, no optimization warnings we get anymore and uh, if everything goes correct it will green like this and it is green like uh, now so let's re-implement the design and uh, when you re-implement the design and generate a programming file you are ready to uh, dump this code in your fpj and see what happens uh, my design implementation is completed I plugged in my FPJ and uh, now I am generating the programming file and meanwhile I just open the adapt to so that I would be able to program my FPJ board Nexus 3 which I am using and um, in here you can see that adapt automatically selected the Nexus uh, 3 board now I need to navigate to my uh, tutorial 3 or tutorial for uh, same programming file I used from the previous tutorial and uh, I programmed this uh, into my FPGA and uh, once it is programmed successfully it will display the output like this 4321 and uh, that's all for 